An allergy is um, an abnormal reaction to um, something that's found in the environment, which you, we would call an allergen. And uh, an example might be hay fever, where the allergen is grass pollen. And what's it doing? Why is it a problem? Um, if you're sensitised to um, allergens, when your body is exposed to an allergen, it will promote an allergic response of some description, which leads to the release of chemicals um, principally histamine in the body which cause um, symptoms and those symptoms vary depending which part of the body it affects so it might be um, a rash on skin it might be a runny nose it could be wheezing if uh, if you're an allergic asthmatic uh, watery eyes all sorts of different things and does it get worse each time it varies but if you have a bad allergic reaction like, like an anaphylactic reaction the um, second attack can be far worse than the first because the first can be sensitizing you in the second but generally speaking people who suffer from chronic allergies the um, uh, severity is proportional to how much of the allergen they're exposed to so and an anaphylactic i mean that you hear about that with people with peanuts or bee stings or something like that mm. that seems to be um quite a dangerous situation to be in what's what, what's happening then well that's a, an overwhelming allergic response affecting the whole body and um it can lead to swelling of the um, mouth and throat and airways and uh, uh in severe cases can lead to um uh, collapse and cardiac arrest and uh, unfortunately people do die of anaphylactic reactions. So you can understand that if you've kind of taken a peanut through your mouth but if you've been stung on the hand by a bee and that still affects the airways? Yeah because the the um, allergen is the bee sting and the bee sting goes into your circulation and the uh, the whole body reacts to it and so the response is all over the body very scary you hear um quite a lot these days about intolerances of food particularly mm. um what's the difference between a food intolerance and an allergy this is an interesting debate um a, f a food intolerance is not really a true allergy it's just something that up seems to upset you um people who talk about um particularly things like irritable bowel syndrome being caused by food allergies or food intolerances i have heard it quoted by gastroenterologists that the number of people who are genuinely allergic to a food is probably only about one percent but it may be that five or ten percent are intolerant to a food in that it causes some some form of symptoms um i don't know exactly what's happening in the body in that case but it, it, it's a lower level of response and is there an easy distinction in that if you had an intolerance then you would get sort of digestive symptoms but if you had an allergy then you would get these other symptoms like the runny yeah. eyes that you were talking about if, if you have an allergy um you would have release of histamine and you would have some significant symptoms and uh, and yes you would normally expect um, more of an effect food intolerances are just um people describe all sorts of symptoms and some of them may may just be like um, um people say if they eat wheat or flour they get bloated well that just may be the effect of having bread in their tummy rather than the fact that they're actually reacting to the uh, proteins that are found in uh, in bread how do you find out that you're allergic is it the case that you eat something one day that you've never had before and whoa, you know you come up with with huge hives all over you um, you find out you're allergic by having a reaction that uh, can't be explained in another way. Um, an awful lot of people have allergic responses without ever knowing what the cause was. So yes, you may uh, eat something and, um, and immediately become aware of it, or you may find out that every time you eat a certain food stuff, you have a certain symptom and it explains it in, in the food terms. But an awful lot more of the um, allergic um, problems in society now are to do with contact allergies, things on skin, and an awful lot of people don't know what it is that sets off the the, um, the rashes on their skin. And can you get um, allergic reactions to insect bites? I mean, I know we mentioned bee stings, but what about mosquito bites and things like that? Interestingly um, enough, um, an insect bite is a reaction to the um, mouth parts or the saliva of the insect. So it's possible to be bitten by a mosquito and not have a little red lump come up, which we call a bite, because if you don't make any kind of... Uh, a reaction to the saliva of the mosquito you will not have a, a bite which is why some people can catch malaria without actually having a mosquito bite or apparently having a mosquito bite hmm. um is it hereditary being allergic to something if if my dad's allergic to peanuts am i likely to be allergic to peanuts um probably not but there, there are odd tendencies that run in families but um uh, allergy is is due to an exposure to something at some stage in your life that leads to a reaction so if, um, if you're never exposed to peanuts, you'll never be allergic to them.
<laughs> it's not possible. <laughs> so how does that work then? Because uh, certainly when you're pregnant, there's lots of advice to not eat peanuts because then you won't develop your um, unborn baby won't develop a, a peanut allergy. That's the theory behind that, is it? If you don't give it to them, then they won't get uh, an allergy. Well, uh, you, the unborn baby actually um, shares its circulation with the mother. So the unborn baby's immu- immune status will be the same as the mother's during... Um, uh, during growth and I don't think it's actually possible to transfer allergies across the placenta um, by the things you you eat in pregnancy I don't think that's possible uh, because I don't think the baby would be generating its own immune response in that respect there is some suggestion that um, uh, uh, peanuts because of the the, the um, uh, incidence of severe reactions should be avoided in the first two years of life and that some of the problems we have with the rise in peanut allergy are related to it being used in the first two years of life and if you think about it peanuts are not a staple food really but what have we done with them we've ground them up we've taken the oil out of them and you look on the packets of so many foods they contain peanut oil and kids are eating it at a very young age. Well, maybe the reason we didn't have problems with peanuts in years gone by is because we less, ate less processed food and they, we weren't exposed to it. But we did have the, the ground nut programme after the war where everybody was encouraged to grow peanuts. Mm. I mean, you would have thought then, or, or can you see that the incidence of peanut allergy has grown since the Second World War? Um, I think the incidence of peanut allergies has taken off in more recent years. I don't think it particularly... Um, uh, accelerated at that stage and i don't know the answer to that it, it was some some illnesses we we don't we didn't recognize and it may be that we didn't recognize it in in years gone by